Good morning. Um, and welcome to the Accessibility First and Designing Learning Material session. Basically, my name is Rami, and I come from the American University in Beirut. That's obviously in Beirut, Lebanon. Um, that's like, what, 10,000 miles away? So my biological clock now insists that it's like 8 p.m., and I have to have dinner and then sleep. So please bear with me if um, I was a little bit slow. Moving on. So um, what comes to your mind when you think about disability? Basically, um, we, when we think of disabilities, most of the ten, most of us tend to think about the extremes. However, there are different types of disabilities that we don't really think about. For example, who of you suffers from um, hearing impairment? No one. <laughs> and uh, how about um, uh, color blinding? Yeah, we got a couple of hands. And who of you um, wear eyeglasses? I can, of course, I can see some. And how about have you ever had a limp in a cast for more than two days? I know I have. Um, other types of impairment might include, uh, as I said, wearing eyeglasses, and um, of course, ADHD and other types of impairment. There you go. So basically, the, there are different categories of impairment, and that include vision impairment, hearing impairment, motor impairment, and cognitive impairments. And basically in this session, we will be focusing on visual impairments and how can we make our learning material and our model more accessible for people with mainly with vision impairments. And specifically, how can we make our themes and our custom pages more accessible and um, provide more pleasant experience for people who are using screen readers. Of course, we all know what screen readers are about. Have, have anyone here actually listened to screen readers? Okay, there you go. So it can really become confusing when you are, um, you know, if you just close your eyes and try just to browse your uh, Moodle application or your web application or your learning material just you know, by hearing what's going on and using your keyboard for navigation. So why should we care? Well, of course, because it is the right thing to do, the smart thing to do. And by the way, it's definitely aligned with um, the UNGC SDGs, the United Nations Global Compact, Sustainable Development Goals, too many acronyms here. Um, specifically SDG number four and 10, that's the um, quality education and the inclusion or equality. Um, and we are also legally liable. So by law, by, with the ADA, uh, is a board anti-discrimination law for people with disabilities. And it has some titles, specifically title two and three of the ADA. It affects web accessibility and you know, closed captioning. It has specific details on that. And also, the Rehabilitation Act, section eight, uh, 508 and 504, which deals specifically with web content accessibility. And it, uh, mainly it applies to all federal entities and to entities which are receiving funding from federal entities. And that's why we at Beirut are affected with that because we are an American university in Beirut and we receive funding from federal entities, of course. And that's why you know, this also applies to us. Also, we are, we are not in the United States. We do have an office in New York, but that's another story. Anyway. So basically, there are <clears throat> many types of disabilities, many types of impairment, 
And there are many ways where you can modify your web application, your web tool, your web content, and your learning material to, be, to become more accessible. So to what level should we be doing that? This is what, what, where I will be focusing in, in this session. Um, the W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, they have um, written a set of guidelines, which are the WCAG 2.0 Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, version 2.0, which states what are the guidelines that your web content need to abide by in order to be compliant to a certain level. So there are different levels, single A, double A, triple A, et cetera. And um, they tell you what to do, what are the recommendations, so that you can have your web content more accessible. And also there are you know, hundreds of tools online. Most of them are for free. Well, of course, for free you know, with specific features where you can you know, just put in your URL to your learning management system, and it will scan to tell you to what level you're accessible. And to do that, um, things to consider when you're designing uh, your user experience to give a pleasant user experience for screen readers. And basically, this applies for dynamic HTML. It applies for um, the course dashboard. It applies for the assignments. And most importantly, it applies to the Moodle themes. Um, so the things that we need to, to, you know, to do and to care about are things like header tags. So Smart usage of header tags will give better user experience for the screen readers, and specifically nesting header tags, you know, the H1, H2, H3, et cetera, heading one, heading two, heading three, nesting them in a smart way that actually makes sense will give users who are just hearing what, um, what your course dashboard is saying, for example, it will give it, it, will give it much better uh, user experience. Um, and then we have the alternating text, which is basically um, people who cannot see pictures. The screen readers will read the alternating text, which will not appear on the screen itself, but it will only you know, be displayed as voice for screen readers. So we always, you know, for every image, we make sure that there is enough description in the alt attribute of the image to specify what exactly this image is saying what does it display, why it is, why is it here for, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> Moving on to link strategy, that's also a way where you can, um, you know, you need to design your links in a way that actually makes sense to people who are just hearing. So you cannot say, um, click here, and on the here there's just a, you know, a hover where it says a tooltip where it says what's going on because people cannot use that. People with uh, vision impairment cannot use that. Uh, so your link would better be descriptive enough to tell people where this is going. And also it applies for menus and nested links, etc. Colors, of course. Um, and you need to give enough contrast to make sure that, um, that this is clear enough for people with color blindness. And for example, you shouldn't say that, please, uh, you know, click on the green button. The button has to have a certain description other than the color. Designing of forms, but that don't really apply to, um, to Moodle or to reading material. And then um, avoiding tables for layout. Tables are, is a very easy way to organize your content. However, um, they are so unfriendly for screen readers. So you better do it using um, divs rather than having tables. Um, lists, so when you're typing, for example, an assignment, um, instead of when you want to you know, list three different things or three different deliverables, instead of just breaking or clicking enter, we, we should use the HTML lists, the UL and LI, you know, you can have this on the uh, rich text editor in Moodle because they provide a much pleasant user experience for screen readers, for people who are just hearing what's going on on this screen. Um, keyboard functional side, just make sure that 
you know, the proper tabbing is there because people will be navigating your, um, your page using uh, tabs, using space bars, and using enter rather than using the mouse, the mouse itself. Um, providing transcripts for audio files and captioning for video files. Obviously, this is mainly for um, people who, who have hearing impairment. And obviously, uh, your content should be as readable as possible. Um, well, let me talk about our trip, basically, in accessibility in Moodle itself. So what we have done is that we have applied um, all the WCAG 2.0 recommendation for a AA uh, website, web content in Moodle by modifying CSS files and by uh, making sure that uh, our learning material is accessible enough, etc. And then we upgraded Mo Moodle, the theme, to, into a bootstrap theme, which is basically, um, which is basically mobile friendly. But the thing that happens is that the old theme, for example, if you have a checkbox, used to display the checkbox in this way. And for the screen reader, this is very obvious that this is an input tag, and it's a checkbox, and it says so and so. But then with Bootstrap, checkboxes became list items with the specific classes. And classes, they are not obvious for screen readers. They do not parse classes. Screen readers just read the HTML of the page. So what we had to do is to add things like role. Role is a specific HTML5 attribute, which is mainly used for accessibility. And we have used Aria, who, who watches Game of Thrones? No one? OK. So yeah, that's not Aria Stark, of course. It's with a Y anyway. So Aria is uh, accessibility for rich internet applications, which is an attribute that, um, that it is used for accessibility. It has a lot of uh, usage. I'll, you know, just for the sake of time, I'll jump to one usage that we have. For example, if we have a course which says that the course is science of uncertainty, the price is $649, which is a discounted price because you have a promotional code, for example, and the original price was 739 which is uh, stroked. Now, for a person who's seeing this, it makes perfect sense. I mean, the discounted price is here, the original price is there, I know what's going on, but for people with vision impairment, it will, I mean, the screen will only read the signs of uncertainty, dollar 649.00, $739.00. Um, what we did is that we added um, the SR only, so we added some, some attributes to this where uh, I say that, for example, um, a, a span that says discounted course validation price is $649, and this is only SR, so this is only for screen readers. It will not display for users, but the screen readers will read it. And then we hided the other span, which says $649, um, area hidden, so accessibility rich internet application. I'm telling this screen reader that do not read this. I've already told the screen reader what to do by using the, the other span. Um, and we're doing a lot of things uh, in terms of digital accessibility, assistive technology, training capacity. We're training our people, faculty, staff, students, and everyone to uh, do that, we're raising awareness, and we're making sure that everything that we're doing is uh, sustainable. We have a set of policies that we have developed, um, like the web accessibility policy, course accessibility policy, institutional accessibility policy, and procurement accessibility policy. And that's basically what we're doing at, uh, at the UB. Um, I think we have a couple of minutes for one minute for questions. Uh, I'll be available to share our experiences and probably share your experiences so that we can see how we can um, you know, benefit from each other's experience in this domain. So, if you have any questions now. Okay. Either no one was listening or I did a really good job here. <laughs> Thank you.